Hi everyone, welcome back. I thought today I might try to talk about setting up some perspective grids for wheeled vehicles. These are a few pages I've done recently and you can see a mix of side view, predominantly side views on this page, but even these have a little bit of perspective. So these are basically just one point perspective. So I want to talk about how to set that up and how to predict the offset of your wheels and what you see through the window for the interior. That's primarily what you need to do in a side view. And then talk a little bit about these kinds of grids. So here you can see some vanishing points, one here. Um, over here, this is a two points. So there's one off way to the right, one way off to the left, off the page. Uh, this one, uh, I, don't, I didn't plot out a vanishing point, but again, probably off the page and a side view again with the offset wheels and then we have to figure out where's the horizon and how much do we see the underside of the bed frame or the underside of the roof those kind of considerations and it doesn't really matter you know what's the object here's some sci-fi trucks at the bottom and some you know sports car things at the top it makes no difference here's a couple of just warm-up perspectives I did just a not of any particular design just trying to get back in the rhythm of defining a vanishing point, horizon line, a grid, then dropping the proper ellipses on there. You'll see I note the degree of the ellipses below. I also want to show how to use ellipse guides to clean up your freehand sketches. Here's another page. This one's a bit wider angle perspective with the vanishing point right there. Uh, this one's got the vanishing point right here, at the top of the tire, rear tire. So we see a little bit of the underside of the bed and um, the other far side wheel is hidden behind this one and then of course the far side wheel there is hidden behind this one. So let's talk about how to start. And what I'm going to be referencing, if you have how to draw, I'm, looks like this little tutorial is going to line up best with chapter 9 on page 153 about and then probably advancing within that chapter to page 166 where it talks about grids. So usually, I, don't know, I will use a slight, again, slightly darker than I would do drawing for myself. But usually when I start a drawing, and I'm trying to pre-visualize a wheeled vehicle, I will start with um, a wheel. And in this case, I'm thinking about sort of a one-point perspective. So there's the minor axis for that. I'm going to put the vanishing point just above the wheel. Let's, you know what, let's make it this a little bit wider angle. Let's put it up here. So that's going to effectively raise the horizon line, which means I'm going to see more of the ground. Um, and I'm going to do this kind of a wide angle. Um, so what I usually do is horizon line, set the ground line that the wheels are going to roll on. You know what? I'm going to switch to darker. Um, so let's not worry about this being a beautiful drawing. Let's worry about it communicating the information. So there's my VP. And here's my first, you know what, leave, <laughs> I'll leave the wheel light so I can fix it up with some ellipse guides. But here's my ground line, and you'll see I'm bending it a little bit. That's, that's pointing to a uh, vanishing point that's off the page, and that would be the uh, left VP over there. And effectively, this is kind of like a barrel or a sphere. So if this is a wide angle, just think of it as a circle and your camera centered on that circle. And then there's a VP at each corner. No, there's no corners on a circle, but uh, at the end of each axis here where it touches the circle. And then your perspective lines will wrap and warp onto this sphere. So this is like a hemispherical lens, like a fisheye lens. And then we're working with this grid. And where I'm going to draw is there's my VP. Those are what I'm assuming. Those are the same. That means my drawing here is going to take place in this little quadrant of that grid. Okay, so that's what we want to replicate when I do this little wide angle lens uh, grid setup. Okay, I'll keep it loose. I'll just go ahead and draw this one. Now, um, minor axis, it's off a little bit. That's okay. You can always fix it up with ellipse guides. Now here's my wheel touching the ground. 
I've set the, the ground line that it would roll along, and here's the horizon. That means any lines in between, if I just divide in half, um, I would get the proper warp. So you can see it's getting straighter and straighter as I get closer, and then as I get out to here, it would get more and more round as I get further and further away from my, from my horizon line. So here's your horizon line. Then what I usually do is do a rough estimate of the diameter, and then when I'm going in this direction, and I'm free sketching, I just do these little tick marks and I foreshorten a little bit going off to the left. That was a little bit not enough, this is a little too much. But I want to get basically three wheels in there. Most of the vehicles I'm drawing are have a wheelbase of about three wheels. And you'll notice when I put those in that the minor axis of each of those ellipses points back to my vanishing point. So they're rotating right because the minor axis is effectively rotating on our two-dimensional plane which is our drawing and then the next wheel I draw up here okay is going to be even thinner right so thinner degree and the minor axis pointing back there so this is the one that I care about for my front wheel so I have three wheels in between rear wheel front wheel and a lot of times I make the front wheel smaller than the rear wheel depending on the vehicle type Let's say I wanted to fix that up and I wanted to know, is that degree right or wrong? Well, I would first estimate that, well, let's take the rear wheel. What degree ellipse should this be? I know where the minor axis should be for all of these to this vanishing point, but where, what should the degree be, which is how thin or how fat right, the ellipse is? Well, here it would be a perfect circle because I'm looking dead center on the vanishing point and when you're looking at a circle perpendicular to its surface, it's a perfect circle. When you look at a circle off from an angle, it becomes an ellipse. So this is below the horizon line here, so it means it can't be a perfect circle anymore. So if I was here, and this is my ground plane, and we were standing here looking down, so this is side view, okay, drawing the little person here. So we are looking down. Here's my wheel. Okay, Looking parallel to the ground in side view. This would eventually go to our horizon line. But here I'm looking down at some angle at this circle. So this is the rear view of my tire. So I'm looking down and the question is what is this angle right here? Well it's no longer 90 which would be out here, a perfect circle. This would be straight down. That would be a circle on the ground at our feet, for instance. And all the ellipses between 90 and zero basically happen between, this is 90 here, this is 90 here, everything in between, um, because based on the angle that we're looking at this plane. So I have to estimate, what, what's my guess of looking at that plane? Well, it's probably, you know, at least 15, maybe 15% 15 off 90. So I'm going to grab, let's, let's do, let's keep it pretty conservative. We'll do it, use it 80, only 10 degrees off. So that means I'm looking down here, which means pretty long lens ish. Um, but I know that it's warping. So that says I'm a little closer. So if I want it, you can start to make it more or less extreme. But the way you use an ellipse guide is the minor axis runs through the middle of all of these these three rows of ellipses. So I first line up the minor axis, okay, put it on there, and then I just move it along until I get to the right size. That one looks about right, an 80, probably a little bit conservative. I could push that a little if I wanted, but for now, let's go with that. So there we go. And then we can put another one inside. You could also reinforce and clean up your minor axis, of course, because you, with every ellipse guide, of course, you also have a straight edge, which is nice. And I'm going to just put in that there, two circles. Now, the question is the front one. Well, it's a pretty wide angle lens, getting a little distortion off to the left. So I would say we're going to be in the range of a 20 degree difference between the front and the rear. So I'm going to grab a 60 degree ellipse. This was an 80. OK, 
okay? And over here, I'm gonna guess that this might be a 60. And the way you tell if you're right, we already know the minor axis, that's pretty easy. Vanishing point, we could draw that in first, so let's draw that in. Um, we know that what the vertical should look like, right? Here it's gonna be exactly 90 degrees to the horizon, but as we get further out to the left, remember we're in this part of our grid, so I'm gonna to have to bend those a little bit. They should be converging down here to a vanishing point below our feet. So the way you estimate the convert the bending is the same amount you bend here off. You want the same sort of bend to be happening through here. So you want to estimate a curve similar to this curve because remember it's all part of mapping on a sphere. So we have that one, we have this one. Now I want to estimate over here. So I'm going to say, I know it should be 90 here and I know I want it to bend, so those are my verticals over there. Put your ellipse guide on your minor axis. Move it along until you get about the right size based on your freehand sketch. Here's what you're looking for. Um, I should probably not have put in this line as early as I did because that's starting to dictate what I think the degree should be, but I don't know what the degree should be. So ignore this one, and let's focus on just this one and the ground line. Those are really the only two that you need, and the minor axis. Now what I'm going to do is position on the minor axis and move along until I hit, and I look here for the size that I want. It's a little bit large, probably want this one. So I'm just going to move that along until it's tangent to the front vertical and tangent to the ground line. And you can move around your minor axis if it doesn't give you the exact right size. So I'll readjust my minor axis here a little bit because I see where the ground line is. Now, the way you know that this is right or wrong is by drawing, and I'll just draw my ellipse template here. If I take this vertical, which I have some level of confidence is right, and I draw those verticals touching tangent to my sphere, my, sorry, my ellipse, and I put a little point where they touch tangent here and here, okay, inside my drawing. And if I connect those, and it looks like it follows my perspective grid, and this is going to my left vanishing point. So if these two look like they're parallel in perspective, then that means that's the right degree. Let me show you what would happen if they weren't. So I, I'm adjusting the position of my minor axis a little. I'm going to draw this ellipse. The other way to do it is you can draw the ellipse, and then you can draw your guideline here, okay? And you can check where it touches tangent here and where it touches tangent here. Now, if you draw those two points together, you can see, does that look like it is parallel to your perspective grid vertical. And if it is, great, that's the right degree. So I'm an 80 here, I'm a 60 there. So that's the most important thing, I believe, um, in setting your grid initially, is getting your wheelbase correct for the desired vehicle you're trying to draw, setting up the wheel sizes, getting them on the same ground line, of course, the track could be different, which is the width of the front or the rear, so then you can adjust after the fact. But this is, I think, the most important thing to be able to do from scratch, essentially freehand with, you know, a set of ellipse guides. Once you know how to do this, then you can move on to doing other grids and other views and setting up some perspective uh, guides like these. So these I just throw in the back of my envelope that holds my ellipse guides, and if I don't want to take the time to set up a view or I need to work faster, I just pull out one of these, and I can start to slip it underneath a piece of paper and draw right on top of it. And I already am, with some level of confidence that I have a decent grid, um, I write the degrees on there so I could easily just go back and grab an ellipse template. But generally speaking, I work freehand um, in all of the first sketches, and then I, so there's my vanishing point. 
So I did exactly the same exercise that I did here for to start this sketch and this sketch, but I did it much lighter. And so you're not seeing all the leftover lines. This is, of course, dark to make a point. These I'm trying to do uh, a nice drawing from the beginning. Some of these others you can see have the heavier line a little bit there in ballpoint, still pretty light, but the exact same exercise. You can see the far side wheels sketched in there to make sure that they're hidden by the body. And um, that's kind of about it. You just want to be able to do this right, from scratch. It works with any view. Um, it's the same exact routine. I think maybe I'll talk about uh, flat perspective set. Oh, let's talk about the one point thing and offsets. Right, so when I'm drawing a side view, I usually start with a wheel. I usually chop it off a little bit at the bottom to get the vehicle to sit on the ground. Then I do here a little estimate of the diameter. Yeah, I put three, draw the rear wheel a little bit larger. Again, make sure it's sitting on the ground. Now you can go ahead and you can draw whatever type of vehicle you had in mind. In this case, we'll do a little, a little quick hot rod. Okay, now, once we've drawn the side view, and this could, we can think of this as either the center line, or we can think of it as the near side corner of the vehicle. In this case, I know that this is probably round across the top, so I'm gonna treat that like my center line. I'll treat this, though, like the corner. So now we have to decide where's my vanishing point. I think a nice way to do these side views is put the vanishing point somewhere just below the tops of the tires, so you don't have to draw the other side of this tire over there. So let's put the VP right here, on, centered on the front edge of this, this A-pillar. Now that means that we're not gonna see, if, unless there's a little curvature in the windshield, which would be odd for a hot rod, but uh, let's just add a little bit. So maybe there's my center line out there. And then let's add a little window graphic. Now you need to set the offset. And what I mean by that is you're gonna move the rear wheel on the other side forward a little, and you're gonna move this wheel back a little. That's gonna give us the illusion of perspective and depth. So whatever distance you move, and you can move it whatever you like, but whatever you do is going to affect all the rest of the drawing. And what I mean by that is that what we've drawn so far is a wheel and a wheel. This is top view. So there's my rear tire and there's my front. Okay, and of course we've got another one over there, we've got one over here. What, what you're gonna do is when you set this offset in top view that we see, so we have a viewing angle, this dimension right here, in top view I'm looking at these, this near wheel and the far wheel, and this offset right here is what I wanna indicate like that. When I do that, effectively what you're doing is setting my viewing distance from the vehicle. And so you can do anything you want, but you need to realize what that position is doing to your viewing distance, because that will greatly affect, are we gonna see just the corners of the vehicle, or are we so far away that we're gonna to get to see some of the center line? And this is really referencing the, um, how to draw pages like 172 to 176. I think 172 actually is probably the better page reference of how to draw, talking about this in detail and setting up different camera lenses. So if I've set this as my offset, what I wanna do is say, well, my VP is pretty much in the middle of these two wheels. That means if the wheels are the same width, front and back, I have the same offset up here. And so what you wanna do is draw a smaller wheel with its top pretty much, so if this is my horizon line at the top so that, of the wheels, there, then I want to draw this one over here, and so it would be basically like this, behind there. This one would be behind here, with the tops ending up in the same spot. Now we're gonna see a little bit of the ground. So this is where it gets tricky in a one-point perspective and a little bit more difficult. Usually we just, I just hint at it, but 
what you want to do, if you're being a little bit more um, correct, is you would need to draw from your vanishing point. Technically, let's see, I'm going to put it right over here. A vertical that's on the near side plane, this vertical is on the same plane as my rear wheel. And I'm going to draw one guideline through that point. And then I'm going to now determine the offset. Let's see, I would have to do it this way. Because I've already set it with the wheel, so now I've got to go back. Now I'm going to go back to the vanishing point, and now I'm going to go back to here. And then when I see when it hits, then I go down to the ground. There's the width of my shadow. And now I'll bring it forward. Like so. So if you had trouble following that one, I don't blame you because I did it sort of quickly. But what it is, let's see if that would be the distance. Let's make this a wagon. That would be my shadow. So what I did there is I just went, let me grab a different color because this is going to be a little tricky. I had set my width with my wheels and I needed to get that width down to the ground plane. So what I did is I just put a vertical. I could have drawn like this, put the vertical on like that, then drawn over to the VP, taken my other wheel, drawn down to the bottom, and then found the width that way. There's lots of ways to get there, but all I'm doing is moving around. There would be the tire on the other side. All I'm doing is moving around in an XYZ grid. So I knew this offset and point, I needed to transfer that down to the ground. I had this line here, take it to your VP, go here, go up, there's your shadow for this offset. Now you can just estimate, because we're gonna see the underside of this um, roof inside there. So now what I do is that as you get closer to the VP, your offsets diminish. So this would be the full width of the vehicle right through there. At the very back, here's our full width of the vehicle, that dimension. So one point perspectives are actually a little bit tricky because you have these changing offsets all the way through until they're at zero and then growing again as they go back to the front. That actually makes one points done properly a little bit tricky. Um, two points are actually, I think, easier because you are basically just drawing. Let's see, if I just drew a bunch of planes like this, we'll start this at the front one. Each one is, you know, slightly different, but they all still relate quite a bit because these are all converging. Right? It could be at a fairly slow pace, so it's kind of like you're drawing the same kind of section over and over again. One point's not that way. One point, if I just drew from this same VP, would look like a dead center line. So if I drew a series of lines like this, and then one way over here, and then I connect those all back to the VP. Let's do this as a ground. Let's go like this, like that. See, I'm drawing over to this VP here, here, there and then I draw another line across the bottom, and then I go up, you'll see the dimension of these becomes foreshortened left and right. And that's what the same, you know, depth on a plane, those similar sort of planes would look like in one point. Actually, this is harder, I believe, um, from doing it lots and lots of times. Okay, so now we know our offsets. So how can we use that to help draw the far side window? Well, if this is the full width of the vehicle, I already know my offset, and this happens to be directly above, so I can just transfer that right up there. So I know that this curve needs to leave from here and go all the way up, and it's gonna be a little bit below. So that's the same curve in one point on the far side window. And then we have nothing here because it lines up, so maybe we see the dashboard and we see a steering wheel here, which is just barely off my VP, so probably no ellipse to worry about there. 
um, seat backs you could put those things in so again what's the offset well a little bit less than this wheel offset here they're a little narrower so they probably touch each other visually and overlap what about if we put a hole in the side of this vehicle what would be the offset there on the other side well it's narrower but I could just draw across the bottom. We can see quite a bit of the shadow. So looks to me like the width is about like that for the shadow using my VP. And I know that this hood sides are narrower than the full width of the wheels. So if that's where that line went, then I would do a little bit less offset um, going through to the other side. Now this isn't lining up to the outside, it's technically in a little bit, right? But, you know, I would guess that that might be a hole to the other side. And then if, we were, if it was a true hole, we would see through to the top of it. Of course we'd fill it with cool engine stuff. What about this line? No, it's right on the horizon. We actually don't see anything of the other side there. So, sorry I made that line a little bit thick, but that's just looking straight through right at the horizon. So hopefully you find that helpful. Um, I think that's probably enough for today. Pay attention to your grids. Use ellipse guides. They're great um, to help you clean up your drawings. Don't, it's not cheating. It's just working smart. And I draw, still draw everything freehand first because I think you get a, a much better sense of the proportion and the overall. So I don't use the ellipse, guide, ellipse guides to help me set up a view. I only come back and um, correct the views. And that allows me to get sort of a, a nice looking sketch out of my very first sketch because it's effectively two or three sketches rolled into one. Um, because I've drawn it with a light marker first, allows me to explore quite a bit and then I can commit with the line work and then all of that light marker disappears. You can also do a levels adjustment when you drop it into uh, digital format like Photoshop and all the light marker will go away. So I hope you find that helpful. As usual, please put comments in the comment section down below. I will try to, I try to read those once a week before I do the next video and put in some content related to those requests. Uh, and I'll try to stick with this um, as long as I can get it done. So, happy Sunday, everybody. Stay safe and be well. Bye-bye.